So the question is, are jumping activities like basketball and volleyball, high intensity activities like weightlifting, bodybuilding, football and martial arts, long duration activities like biking, running, all or even all activities like push-ups, squats, daily tasks, walking, uh, crunches, are these risk factors for varicocele? And the answer is yes, these are risk factors for varicocele. There's a fair amount of scientific literature supporting that. Um, so the scientific literature says if you take a guy who swims and if you take and compare him to a guy who plays basketball, the guy who plays basketball is more likely to have a higher grade varicocele and worse varicocele symptoms. So, but what I found through my practice and through helping many, many, many clients is that there are specific variables that you can manage that mitigate the risk of jumping activities, high intensity activities and long duration activities, right? So for example, for high intensity activities, what can you do to mitigate the risk? Well, the main risk is that high intensity activities pressurize the body and torso. And what that does is that forces, that increases the pressure that prevents the blood from the, from the testicles from draining back to the heart. That means more increased varicocele swelling. So how can you manage or mitigate this risk? Um, so what you can do to minimize the pressure is lift with better technique, lift with perfect technique, uh, promote posture during exercise, not just short-term, but long-term posture and mobility improvement makes a big difference. You want to also wear compressive underwear, compressive cooling underwear. You want to also not work out when you're bloated right, or constipated. These are all risk factors that are going to increase the pressure buildup that's going to increase your swelling and causes that pain or increased swelling during exercise. Okay, another example, long duration activities like biking, running, how do you, or sports, how do you mitigate that risk? Well, the main risk factor here is excessive testicular overheating. So what you've got to do is during exercise, you've got to wear the most cooling underwear imaginable possible, right? Not ice underwear, no ice underwear. That's going to cause the opposite. It's going to cause overcooling of your testicles. So what you want is breathable underwear with support because the support helps decrease that, helps improve the blood circulation like we said a little bit earlier. So cooling, you want to make sure you wear really thin breathable shorts ideally not pants but shorts so what you do there is you reduce you increase maximize the heat that's expelled from the testicles and from the body in general and that helps make a big difference or you drink cold water when you're exercising right that makes a difference or after exercise and this is these are really big ones is you perform an inversion which helps increase the testicular blood drainage and after you're done exercise, for example, you can perform a cooling treatment where you run cool water over your, you just cool your entire body, for example. You don't want to necessarily, or you can, if you, if you go into the hot tub, after that you want to perform a cooling treatment. The good ratio there is for every one minute of uh, hot tub time you have or sauna time you have, you have two minutes of cooling time right? One to two ratio. So that's, that's how you should do it. And if you perform a cooling treatment after that, that helps mitigate the risk. It helps alleviate the stress that was built up during the overheating of testicles during exercise. And really, how do you cool? Proper cooling is not making your testicles cold. Again, you don't want to go the opposite way. Trying to alleviate heat stress by causing cold stress is not a good idea and it doesn't work. It increases testicular sensitivity. And I've had many clients use ice on their balls and that doesn't work. You don't do that. You want to normalize and maybe a little bit cool to help kind of have the therapeutic effects of the cooling. The idea is if the water feels okay on your face, it's okay on your balls. Okay, so those are some ways, those are some things that you can do to mitigate the risk of activity. And when you do that, jumping activities, high intensity activities, long duration activities, and ju just being active and exercising in general, it's fine. And you mitigate that risk. So there's a lot that you can do. And that's what I'm all about. That's what varicocele healing is all about. 
what can you do? What are all the variables that you can manage that will help mitigate the risk of your varicose seal? And doing and managing these variables, there's lots of risk factors for varicose seal itself. Once you manage those risk factors, you help cure the pain, restore fertility, reduce the varicose seal swelling size. Now again, I'm not saying it's a 100% cure and it's not. It, could, it's, it is usually a 100% cure for pain. It is usually a 100% cure for fertility, but usually not for 100% reduction of the swelling. Um, but it does help reduce that a fair amount for most of my clients. Um, so when someone, when your doctor says, don't, when, when your doctor says, do nothing, wait and see what happens. I don't believe in that. I believe that you should do everything that you possibly can and not just wait and see what happens so that you have, so that you, you which ends you up having surgery or embolization coils, right? You don't want that. What you want to do is you want to do everything possible that you can possibly imagine, right? And I have all the best treatments and all the best strategies for you already. Um, you want to do everything that you possibly can to, mit to not have surgery because surgery is high risk. It's not very effective either. So, and if you have surgery, you still have these risk factors that I'm talking about, right? So we're talking about higher chance of varicose seal redeveloping post-surgery. Anyway, so the whole point is there's a lot that you can do and you should focus on what you can do and really get started with that now.